editors, videographers, musicians, all under one roof. And we are a boutique creative house where we actually do the creative at much more affordable price and have the staff in-house to execute it professionally. My name is John Palacio. My name is Luis Montez. My name is Paul Robinson. I am Jesse Cervantes. I'm Curtis Peel. My name is Ben Joran. One of the most common questions we have from potential clients is how does it work? What happens when you engage N Now Media to create a video, a marketing campaign? It first starts with, you know, obviously having the phone conversation with the client, brainstorm with them to come up with a really good concept and a really good idea to push whatever they're trying to do to the next level. Only with that in mind can we really try to tailor a concept and a script for their exact audience that fits in with their branding and the message they want to tell. We'll storyboard it out, get a real rough idea uh, of what we want to do. We'll then present the client with a couple of options, the different ways that we could go with some of the things that we've come up with. And they'll say, this is good, and then we'll come back and we'll start animating that or designing it or editing it. Our clients are generally, you know, like to be really hands-on, and we'd like to hear from you kind of all along the board. There's no surprises. What we like to do with every partner is we actually create a page on the NNOW website. So they can give feedback, and that way, when the time we get to the final product, you know, usually there's not a whole lot more revisions to do because they, we've already been working together the whole time. The big difference is that, that real personal creative touch. We have a creative group that can execute that vision, whether it's animation, video, motion graphics, and do so with some unique creative that is custom tailored to that business. You know, dream it up. It's video. It's magic. It can happen. Live from Hollywood, you're watching Actors E Chat. I'm Kurt Kelly. Don't forget to go to the Actors Reporter site at actorsreporter.com and click on the, I don't know what that was, but click on the Actors <laughs> Reporter discount and uh, you'll find all the people who have been sponsoring the show and who bring you this uh, show over the last five years. And if you click on their site and put in the Actors Reporter discount code, it'll get you special discounts and savings when you use the Actors Reporter Ooh. promo code. Uh, Rick Nahara. Hello. Writer, producer, director, yes. make my own way businessman in yeah. uh, not only Los Angeles but Hollywood. Yes, Hollywood for um, many years. Tell me about Cesar Chavez. Well, you know, um, you know, I remember doing a, a, a fundraiser for Cesar Chavez years ago. I only wish I could have been there to help. Uh, it was a great, great time. Was this in '85, '86? Yeah. Okay, I was there to help. Yeah, Good. and actually, I was at ABC then. We helped. I cover think it, it. was um, uh, Martin Sheen was there. A lot of different people. Right. And so. They had me there, and, and you know, two of my cousins are married to his daughters, so I've, I've you know, he was a, a relative in a way. And what an inspiring family. Oh, what a, well, incredible man, mm -hmm. and, you know, just in, charismatic and, and great, but I, what I noticed about him is all these Hollywood stars are there, and the only people he, he really paid attention to were the farm workers. I mean, he went to every single table. He really was a man of the people. He was a man of the people. He truly was. I mean, I, there I was the, up at the Hollywood table, the dais, and all these stars. And I looked down, and there he was, meeting each person and spending time with them. And, you know, he never had made more than $6,000 in a lifetime, never owned a house, never had yeah, 6000 a year tops working for the UFW. My cousins that worked for the UFW would get checks for $5, for $5 a week. So $5 a week, and they'd call him up and say, you have to cash your check. Five dollars a week. week. I don't think that met minimum wage. No, no. At any time it in the was, last couple of centuries. It was, it's very rare that people really give themselves to to a cause or care as much as that man did, and and so many others. So it's, you know, I I, I help out with an organization called Field, and um, what's no, Field about? It's uh, education. It's really what Caesar. So it's not about going out and growing your no, own farm. No, if not, you will. not saying organic versus Monsanto or anything. Like oh, that. okay, okay. Its field is basically bring um, your own seeds. It, yeah, it's educating um, people in rural communities and giving them a chance at education. Why were you so touched by this to make it one of your philanthropic endeavors? Um, I believe you can't go forward unless you give back. I and, agree, and that's really. And I think the more you give in the world, the more you get back. But at the same time. 
it's it, you're, you become we are there's far more similarities between us all than differences. And I've always looked at that. Hello, did you hear that? Yes. Far Seriously, more there similarities is. between us all than differences. And even though I've worked in in diversity, I've been at CBS nine years for the diversity showcase where I, you know, teach and train actors. And you've given a lot back to After SAG because I know you've done um, yeah. those showcases yeah. at After SAG also because yeah. I was doing some research. You did it in 2012, most recently. Yeah, I've, I've, I've done so many showcases. I've taught so many actors. It's, it's, it's great because when you, I, I, I approach being an acting coach by being a director. Mm -hmm. I direct actors. So in a lot of ways, I'm able to, to it's, not a, it's not a theory, it's not a thousand things. It's really giving them the tools to, to make them become the best they are. Right. In other words, I don't want you to be anything like me. I want you to find the artist. That, that find your you. own signature. Exactly. Be more of you. And don't be intimidated by someone else doing really well. I think that's the best opportunity to rise your own game. Yeah, most people that I work with, I mean, I've worked with some, a lot of celebrities and stars are mm -hmm. really just very normal people. I mean, you, you'd be surprised once you get in a s celebrity world, you're, you're kind of more and more isolated. Right. And so a, a lot of times, you know, you've reached out to people and talked to them. They're, they're, they want the human interaction. They want to be at And they love to give back. I've had a lot of actor friends um, come around to a coaching session or give their advice as well, go to, you know, go to shows. And it is a community that wants to help each other. Right. We have a question from one of our actors, each yeah. actors watching today. John. Yes, from Melissa English. She wants to know, how did you learn how to customize your pitches, I guess, for the shows? Oh. Ah, oh, good dude. question. How do I sell this? You know, um, What's your 30-second elevator pitch? 30 second elevator pitch. <laughs> you have 15 seconds. Go. I think the biggest way you do it is you make it uniquely about yourself. In other words, if you come to a network, and I've sold my four pilots for shows, at least four or five, um, you have a reason why you're doing it. I'm wanting to do this show for this reason. It's, this, it's close to my heart, and this is the basic premise. That's normally the beginning of the cell. Tell them why it's about you. Why you are the expert that no one else knows this better arena better than you. You know the story better than anyone else. So say, Melissa, you're, you're a woman. If it's a woman's story, <laughs> obviously this is why you care. It's those things. When I talk about a story that's uh, Latino in nature, yes, I'm Latino. I always say I was Latino when it wasn't cool. <laughs> <laughs> um, it wasn't. It's still not that cool, but still, okay. I say that. So, you hear people because I've sat in those pitch meetings, having worked at the networks yeah. and pitching the networks, where they go, "Well, it's like this and it's like that." Do you find that the likes ever got you anywhere? No. I, I, you know, the, the problem with the likes is, you say it's like Titanic. <laughs> oh, that's been done before. <laughs> yeah, exactly. What a concept. I mean, everyone in Hollywood does like to be second normally than first because second is easier. It's less risk. Right. But I think if you say, you specifically say why this story is important, why you love this story, and you're excited about it and you're talking about it in that way, the, the excitement will go to them. It's just, you know, if you're an actor on stage, you got to be excited about what you're doing. you got to either be, you know, hungry or, or you want something strong. You right. want to make strong choice. The same as writers. A lot of times I've seen writers go into a pitch that aren't using in plain entertainment. It's not an entertaining pitch. So somebody new wanting to follow in your footsteps and break through. Yeah. What do you advise now that you've actually walked down that path? You know, I would say... How could they do it better or at least do it right? Constantly check yourself. Constantly mm -hmm. see what you're doing right or wrong. Uh, constantly be involved with, with your career. You know, don't also don't neglect the other parts of your life. I mean, I always find that when an actor walks in a room and I see what, 2,500 of these actors uh, a year audition for CBS that I have to be in the casting session for, I look for individual, something that makes them individual. Versus it's all about me. Yeah, versus all about me. For Versus, you know, because that's just, to me it's, an actor walks in the room and says, I'm an actor, I've done this and this and this. Someone walks in and goes, I'm a crab fisherman. Oh my God, a crab fisherman, wow. I never, what, you what, have a life have outside a li of this. So what do you, 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 you catch tuna too? I watch that show with you too. <laughs> tuna, it's, it's amazing. You know, so I mean, I'm going to ask about stuff I don't know about. Right. You walk in the room and go, I was in 40 equity waiver shows. I'll be like, really? Yeah, That's great. Great. Anything else you've done? You know, yeah. so. Especially in Hollywood, that's all you meet is actors. So you want right. something different. So if you're coming, even out, when you're having dinner, you're meeting, meeting actors. actors of course. Oh, what do you do? They're, but you know, I think the more the person's an individual, and you know, I, I love working with people that are 
not actors necessarily. Mm -hmm. You know, um, artists first. You know, creatives first. Uh, people that live their lives and, and, and reach back in the world and give. Those are the people that fascinate me. And that's the ones I want to work with, you know. It's like the boring ass... Sorry, I can't say that. The, I look at the writers. It's the reality. The reality. It's yeah. like you're walking in going... I went to this commercial acting course. I went to this and this. I, I went, went to that. To this finishing school, school for yeah. this education was huh. it? Oh, Tell really? me something about yourself yeah. that, I, I, that no one else knows. Right. That, that, that excites me and makes me go, wow, I, I want to meet you. I want to mm -hmm. hang out with you. Because the truth is, it's, it's also. There's a connection. Well, there's a connection, of course. You're looking, going, well, why are we similar? Why is there something about us that I relate to? I mean, there was a. A girl came to my acting class, and, and I also teach writing as well. So you actually teach classes oh, yeah. on the side. Yeah, you do I, privates or I, I've done class? privates. I do all those stuff. I mean, I don't. Tr I really don't try to do it. Mm -hmm. It's funny. Either either uh, cast directors call me up and they'll say, "There's this actor, they're up for this big audition. Would you would you coach them?" Right. So every once in a while, and, and I've had some pretty big celebrities, which I'm surprised by. I mean, really surprised when they call me up. I just signed anybody's I, name we can I, mention, I, or I you signed the waiver. I signed the okay. the confidence. Uh, was a, a non disclosure. I did not teach <laughs> them. Oh, yes. Yeah, so I've I've signed non disclosures. But when I'm, you were working with Robin Williams, oh yeah, no, yeah, yeah, no, it's like, well, one time Brit Brittany. I mean, the whole you point right. is I didn't want. To, I can't really right. say. Right, understood. Uh, but I've really looked at people and. Uh, you know, when you when you when you're coaching someone, it's it's a it's a you have to look out for the best for that person. Right. It's really not about you. I mean, you're looking at someone and going, "How can I make you as great as you can be, and 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 even greater than for and by that's the next art. year?" Well, it's it's the part of seeing something about people, and I, I tend to be very positive. I look at people and and I want to hear their story. Mm -hmm. I, I, there was a girl in my class one time. She wrote a monologue, and she said, uh, "You know, I don't want, I don't want to do this." It's it's boring. It's horrible. It was about her being in foster care. Oh, and I told her, I said, real. you have to do that. Yeah, she did that monologue, and she got cast in a, a major film of a week later. And Probably because she opened her soul. She opened herself totally wow. up. Not only did she she did that monologue for the casting director, they cast in this gr huge film. She started on her own foundation, helping out foster children at the age of thirteen. How lovely! Lovely story, and a lovely girl, and. Uh, you know, I, I mean, I, those are the people I get to work with, and that's that's what really excites me. Tell me about the Mexico Report. Uh, the Mexico Report. Uh, my wife started that. Uh -huh. It's a great blog. It's a family affair. A family affair. Yeah. No, it's it's. I, well, I, you know, you want to support her, right. your wife, of course, and your family. Um, but what I love about it, she supports other people. I mean, the Mexico Report is positive stories about Mexico. Mm -hmm. So if you're any way interested about Mexico or Latin America. It's a great blog that talks all about positive stories about Mexico. And that's, you know, it's... Here's the blog. Oh, look at that blog. Look at that, the Mexico Report. Now, can people contribute, or do they just sign up and they follow? Sign up and follow, and I'm telling you, it's, it's, it's so many and great stories. what was stories. the motivation to do this? She, you know, there's a lot of horrible stories about Mexico. and, it, and some There of is, there's, but there's, there are about true. Detroit, Funny, too, course. and I'm going there tomorrow. Yeah. Well, the problem is when they just keep telling that story, mm -hmm. and there's no counter. And sh what she did is she wanted to tell positive stories about Mexico. And being married to a Mexican-American, um, she wanted those stories told. And so she has a great love for Mexico and all things Mexican, and, and including myself. Mm -hmm. And we have, well, that's nice. we have children together. Right. They're, they're half Irish, half Mexican. They're called Mexicans. Mix Mexicans. <laughs> yeah, Mexicans. They're Mexicans. Nice. So, so there are. And so they're not Mc Irish. No, no, okay. they're, they're they're Mexicans. Mexicans. So Mexicans. And uh, they speak it. beautiful Spanish, and I sent them to a, a Spanish language school. Uh, for it's almost forced. It's like I call it Spanish waterboarding. It's like <laughs> agua, agua, agua. And they learn all that, and they'll thank me later. Right yes. Now right now, they're not thanking. And how old are they? Oh, six, eight, and uh, six, nine, and eleven. My son just turned eleven. Nice. And we'll be back with uh, Rick Nahara in just a moment on Actors Eat Chat. I'm Kurt Kelly. Over her long career, Nina Fosh appeared in classic films such as Spartacus, The Ten Commandments, and An American in Paris. She received an Academy Award nomination for her performance in Robert Wise's Executive Suite. In 1965, Nina Fosh arrived here at USC to begin teaching directing, and I was lucky enough to get into one of her first classes. Even as she continued acting in film and television, Nina's passion for teaching lasted for over 40 years. 
Her chorus was immensely popular because she developed her own unique style, drawing on her experiences studying with Lee Strasberg, Stella Adler, and Uta Hagen, and being directed by such icons as Vincent Minnelli, Stanley Kubrick, Cecil B. DeMille, and Otto Preminger. As I began directing, the tremendous value of her teachings became evident and how important it was to preserve them for future generations. We became close friends and at a cinema department event, we ran into my former classmate, George Lucas, who invited us up to Skywalker Ranch, where we discussed creating a DVD of her course. He agreed to finance it, and on January 10th, 2002, we began taping an entire semester using a crew of USC film students. We filmed for eight hours a week for 15 weeks, and this is the result. Okay, so what are we gonna do this semester? From a land far away. Oh, I'm Kurt Kelly, and you're watching Actors E Chat. Go to the Actors Reporter site at actorsreporter.com. Click on the Actors Discounts. You'll find the people who have been bringing you the show for the last five years, for the millions of viewers who get to watch this for free around the planet and via television. And if you click on their sites, make sure you like this one while you're there, and any sites you find us on, as well as their site, and put in the Actors Reporter discount code and get special discounts for visiting and saying hi. We have Rick Nahara, who Hello. has built his life around making a difference through writing um writing acting i've had to do it all i mean i think i've, I've i think what it is I've, I've told my story and people being almost answer. white almost white which is your new my, book my new book that came out almost white yeah it's a, it's is a that going to be a film also i'm An sure almost white film uh, or showtime special or something like that okay I've done two showtime specials every time I, something happens in my life i either do a special about it uh one was having kids so it was right. like diary of a dad man about, of a dad, you know, you know, all my craziness with yes. kids. Uh, um, the three o'clock wake up calls. Yes. Oh, yeah. Kids always running in my bed every single time. Nice. It's like, even this morning, my little daughter just jumps on. Dad. And she, yeah, she's holding me, and then she doesn't want me to leave. Oh. So I have to get going here. And so, <laughs> but you know, how crazy my life is having a family. Yesterday, I went to Universal Studios with my kids. Really? Took them to Universal, and I gave a, a commencement speech. Uh, at Pasadena City College, so I all left. in one day. All in one day. So I'm with the kids. Hey, they're having fun. Hey, gotta having? go. Take Excuse commencement. Excuse me a now, second. Yeah. <laughs> Close inside the car. Change into a whole right. different outfit. Go give a commencement uh, speech. It was a great speech. Left to all this group of, of Latino kids that are, they want to go to college. Nice. And I basically told, I said, listen, you're Latino. You are the solution. You are yeah. never the problem. Nice. Get that in your head. So I talked to them, and it was great. And then turned around, and I said, we talked about commitment. I said, look, commitment is this, keeping your word. I said I'd be here. And even my family at Universal Studios, I will be here, and I'm here, even though I want to be in the Transformer ride, because it was so much fun. I loved that Transformer ride. Well, and actors, but a lot of people, not just actors, people in general have a tendency to disregard others' time and show up late or, yeah. oh, sorry, I'm late. And, and my thought is, if you're not there early, you are already late because that's yeah. being disrespectful of someone else's time. You know you're going to be late. Pick up the phone and call. Yeah, be the best you can be at that moment. Give it your all. Don't leave anything on the field. I mean, as an actor, as a person, as a human being, because more important than being an actor is being a human first. I mean, it really is. In the end, careers ebb and flow, and I've seen guys that are huge stars, and I've, I've talked to them when they had nothing. and reversed it where they became stars again and all that stuff in the end it's it's like the, you're gonna have to wake up with yourself in the morning look mm -hmm. yourself in the mirror and, and say am i happy am i glad doing what i'm doing and is this good and because that's the most important thing and and i've been on the red carpets i've had all those lives and and i have to tell you in the in the end it's it's are you able to walk away with your head high and say i gave it my all i tried the best i could and i was great to everyone around me or have you created a scary movie for everyone you've encountered and for yourself? Yes. Because we do create our own environment, whether we want to take acceptance for that. Here's some shots of you on the red carpet. Yeah. Did you envision this when you were 17, working out, doing some <laughs> comedy, writing with Whoopi Goldberg and mm. some of these other people? Did you say, this is where I'm going to be? Yeah, actually, it's a movie I wrote, Nothing Like the Holidays. It was, uh, and um, who are you with here? Uh, it looks like the producer and his wife, okay. I believe. I was the producer's wife. God, look at me. I'm, I'm and it looks like you're outside the Roosevelt Hotel? Was yeah, it, it was, it was, okay. it was Grommet's the Chinese Grommet's Theater. Theater? Okay. Grommet's Chinese Theater. Happened to know that area. Yeah, yes. it was John Leguizamo started in with uh, um, 
a lot of different stars. Uh, actually, Alfred Molina, mm -hmm. um, Elizabeth Pena, who I'd started with in a movie called How the Girls, How the Garcia Girls Spent Their Summer with um, uh, Amer America Ferrar. So, I, you know, you, you get a chance to work with a lot of people, and after a while, you, I think the best pers perspective is my kid, my, my children. They look at all the stars they meet right. as just family friends. And in a lot of ways, that's really what it is. It's, it's most of the stuff, the vanity around it of the red carpets and, yeah, Tavis Smiley, I was one of his speakers, and he actually produced my book. Um, he produced your book? Yeah, him and Hay House actually put out my book, Almost White. Oh, really? So, yeah, and I, I'm, you know, I've been on CNN, I've had that whole kind of world, and, and it, the book has been great because it opens up a lot of doors. People get to hold it. Mm -hmm. That's why I did the one-man show, Almost White because I wasn't getting enough people to read. So I said, you know something, I'm going to perform it. Once I performed it, people were lining up to the buy book the book. The book blew up. Yeah, it was amazing. I see. It was amazing. Tell me about this. Oh, that was, a, I just spoke at Stanford uh, last week. and uh, So you get uh, invited to a lot of colleges I and universities. Why Stanford, is that? Stanford, Harvard, Wellesley. Are you uh, a Ph.D. in life? No, not at all. Not I'm, in life? I'm on life. I okay. am a Ph.D. Not at all. Just Because the other guys get the Ph.D.s, they can never do surgery. Right. They can never do surgery. It's just PhD in lit and things like that. For me, uh, I love speaking at college. I worked for, I just gave a donation to the Ivy League project, mm -hmm. which brings Latino kids to Harvard, Stanford. Uh, Martin Mara is a great guy. Ivy League project, if you get a chance, look it up. Um, they are changing what the face of colleges are. Because our future in America is this, and I do believe this. Take how notes. well, how well you treat Latinos and whether we're <laughs> educated or incarcerated will decide the future of America because we are the future. So you're going to be a minority no matter what. So always be good to the minorities. And that was one of the things. I gave this big commencement speech, and I said, how many people here are Latino? All these hands raised up. Nice. And I said, how many here are, are, are not Latino? Five hands raised up. And I said, see, Steve, now you know what it feels like to be a minority. So everyone should be good to everyone. And right. that's really the pos. Uh, that really, what it is is like we make a better America if we're all together versus apart. All this kind of, you know, fractionalized politics and things like that does nothing for our, ourselves as a country. And what I do is a lot of times tell people about what it really means to be Latino. I mean, my father was in Vietnam. He was in World War II. My uncle died in World War II. My brother was wow. in the war. I've served uh, entertaining the troops in Diego Garcia, places like that. Where are the stories that show the Latino that's in the army? Right. You know, we're the most medal of honor winners are Latinos per capita. Did not know that. Yes, it's true. We are. They, I don't know why it is. Maybe we're in the first wave of every battle. They put the Latinos. Oh, put them up front. Put Garcia, yeah. Gomez, you go up front. Good luck. <laughs> <laughs> um, <Gosh>. but <laughs> That's a scary thought, <laughs> actually. Scary, I know. Dang. A few hairstylists. <laughs> yeah. Few, everyone else they put up there. We almost, I think, not to get overly political, is it time for us to rethink that we're the land of the free and the most incarcerated? Yeah, I mean, I think that's... It's it sounds like that's part of your well, theme when you're talking. Well, I, it, it worries me because when Governor Brown became uh, governor the first time in California, there were the 40... The Lind Run stuff? Yeah, yeah, Governor okay. Brown. We have 44,000 uh, prisoners were in our prison system. Now he's governor again. There's 44,000 prison guards. Think I did that. not know that yeah, statistic. Check that out. Now, check statistic. did that actually grow during... Him coming back in office to forty four thousand, or was it there and yeah, I mean, it was, it inherited was, it was that from in, in, Arnold, inheriting, inheriting from okay. everybody. But in the same time, he sure hasn't stopped it. Right. I mean, when you look at it, you, you look. Most people of color are are incarcerated, you know, for a lot of different reasons. But you know, l lack of of legal defense, a thousand other things. I mean, right. you look at it, but it's the whole point, isn't it? It's cheaper. It costs fifty thousand dollars to to educate to educate. Or incarcerate, incarcerate a a, 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 a prisoner. prisoner. Right. Fifty thousand. It imagine what fifty thousand a year does. It costs something That's like seven, tuition yeah, at, at USC. At USC seventy five thousand for someone who's uh, a juvenile. Wow. So we're spending all this money on incarceration versus education. And in the end, it starts from 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 preschool. Right. Is when you start educating people. So that's the that's the future. If one in six are, are Latino in um, in America right now. You know, and you think that the biggest birth rate is among Latinos. If we are not educated, we have, we're all growing up with a big pro problem. Right. So I really look at that, and I think that is one of the issues that, uh, I, you know, I've worked with. I did a, a proposition, Prop 38. I fought for it uh, la last year. with Which Molly. was what? It was about getting money directly to the schools. Okay. And not to the people in Sacramento. So I don't mean to be political. You can ask me anything about 
acting or whatever, I'm at Rick Nahara, you can Twitter me, or my email is Mr. Rick Nahara at Gmail, and I'll answer those questions. But I think when he has 10,000 new emails after the show today, <laughs> he'll be doing this purple, we'll do that. purple. purple. So we have another question, John, from our actors each other. Yeah, Melissa again wants to know, uh, other than the Mexican report, how do you reach out and help developing countries in Latin America and raise awareness? You know, very good question. Mm. You know, this is a global issue. It's a global issue. Yes, it is. Um, a lot of ways, I, I feel you have to kind of help. You have to deal with your, your backyard first. So, Thank you. So, you know, I, Sometimes we're too busy meddling everywhere else and forget all yeah. the homelessness and uneducated people sitting right here. Yeah, and I think a lot of times is I, I do reach out you know, a lot of ways, and I, I do do a lot of speaking and volunteering. You know, yesterday I, I was giving a commencement speech. I think it was zero. No pay whatsoever. They didn't um, even pick up your gas. No, nothing. Okay. Nothing. That's they, you know, you, yeah. but for every ten I do that, there's there's a Harvard or there's right. a Yale or someone else paying. Um, or they buy you lunch. Well, buy me lunch, yeah. a speaking fee. Nice. Sometimes, yeah, yeah, they'll do that sort of stuff. But <laughs> but you give back when you can. You know, fields a way I give back. Um, the Mexico report's great with my wife and giving back that way. And yeah, I do want to reach out to other areas, but I do think. A lot of times in your backyard. I mean, Eddie almost once said something, and I, we, we were together giving a. Um, I was interviewing him for right. a show, and he said something. He goes, "If you want to really make a difference, teach one child around you." And really? that's you know sometimes you have to bring it home because there's a lot of issues at home that we're not dealing with. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you look at if if like you brought up, America is a, a land of incarceration. What are we doing about educating people so there isn't this pathway to jail? I mean, those are, are strong issues that we're not dealing with here. Right. So I, I'm not don't want to leave uh, the rest of Latin America apart, but right now I I'm, I have concentrated a lot in, in this country. Yeah, because we are living here this week. I'm Kurt Kelly, and you're watching Actors Eat Chat. We'll be back with more with Rick Nahara in just a moment. Hey everyone, I am Judith Jones. If you are looking for photographs, which a lot of you are, let's face it, we need photographs every day, actors, models, even if you're just, you know, the milkman, you need photographs, okay? You need to look good. And if you wanna look good, you've only got one man to go to, and that's John Michael Ferrari. You see, I needed to look, I needed to look good. So I went to John and he basically took me to the most beautiful place in LA and took these wonderful photographs of me and I really didn't even recognize myself because I just looked, well, let's just face it, I looked stunning. So if you want to look stunning like myself in those photographs, uh, go to him. He will make you look beautiful. If you're pretty, he'll make you look prettier. If you're not pretty, he'll make you look pretty. John Michael Ferrari. That's all you need to know. So go to imagesbyferrari.com, that's the website, imagesbyferrari.com, and you can check out all his photography, and you can contact him there. You can look at a picture of me. He directed me, because if you need direction, which, hello, I do, uh, he directs you too. So go and check that out, imagesbyferrari.com. You'll love it, you'll look great. Check it out, bye everyone. I'm Kurt Kelly. You're watching Actors E-Chat live from Hollywood. And don't forget to go to the Actors Reporter site, click on the Actors Discounts, and go to the people who have been bringing you this show, and they will give you special discounts when you type in Actors Reporter. Mm -hmm. We're with Rick Nahara, who is a writer, producer, director, a film star, and a new film forthcoming, possibly. Oh, yeah, this uh, taco shop. Tell me about your tacos. <laughs> taco shop. You it's kind a, of typecast yourself a little title. bit. Taco shop, almost <laughs> white. <laughs> well, taco shop came. They they approached me. They they they, I see. they weren't. So sure. this wasn't your taco. I I rewrote the script. And, I uh, Co-wrote it and uh, and then and this I, is taco shop. Yes, taco shop. Tyler. That Posey. doesn't look at all like you. No, no. He's yeah, he's okay. the lead. I'm okay. I'm I'm the I'm the owner of the the taco shop. I see. So you're like the I, taco boss. Taco boss. I was I taco boss. Um, not Taco I, Bell. Yeah, not Taco Bell. It's like a it's like a Latino clerks. It's like a Latino clerks. But oh, really? Yeah, it's not that I typecast myself. A lot of times people go, here's the show, and it happens to be Latino. You want to rewrite it? <laughs> or you want to write it? What or, a concept. Or they'll do it. And, and part of me is like, yeah, I can't put it down because you need a Latino in that writer's room right. to make it turn out good. You know, otherwise, when it's not written by Latinos, it tends not to do well. And so part of me is if I don't be in the writer's room, it's going to turn out horribly. So yeah, I'll, I'll step in as a writer. Sometimes I step in as an actor. 
and a performer. I mean, I toured with Latino Logs for years. It's, my show went to Broadway, mm -hmm. um, with you know, and that's been wonderful. And I still go back to acting. I was uh, I was just acting at Casa Zero One Zero One in Boyle Heights. <laughs> okay, it was a uh, Josefina Lopez who did Real Women Have Curves. She created this great theater in the hood and basically Boyle Heights. I mean, there was a woman outside selling pupusas. Yes, she said, you know, would you like to have my pupusa? And I was like shocked at first. And then it, it, I tried it, it was delicious. It's this El Salvadorian dish. It's not Mexican, pupusa, try it. And What is in a pupusa? It's, a, it's like a weird thing, I couldn't figure it potatoes? out. Potatoes? It's uh, potatoes, the egg. I think I've actually had one. Yeah, it was like a tortilla thing. I was thing. in Central America, yeah. It, it was really a good. Little greasy, a little if greasy, if I remember yeah, correctly. A little greasy, yeah, okay. that's, that's why the obesity within our culture, I'm sorry. Yes, here, have say. some more of this. <laughs> have some more. Yeah, we're gonna fry Stick that. Stick that to your <laughs> thighs. Yeah, they, but that place, uh, they did my show um, uh, Almost White, and we started there, and, and I'm sure it'll, I'm already talking about going off Broadway with it. And the film coming soon. Coming a question soon. from an actor's Yeah, show. Melissa wants to know, do you have a favorite celebrity you worked with and why? Uh, gosh, there's a lot, so it's always hard to say because you get in trouble for that question. Um, you know, Okay, I, who is the one you didn't like? No, go ahead. I could definitely go with that. Yeah. <laughs> Can't um, talk about I, the one I really, I really liked. liked. You know, I mean, I... I, I, I you see so many. I mean, it's, it's like I got to, the Wayans I love because they gave me my first job. Uh, great family, you know, great guys. Uh, Eddie Olmos, uh, or Edward James Olmos, yes. uh, wonderful. Danny Trejo, like we mentioned earlier. Yes, I love Danny. Tell him I said hi. Yeah, um, most, and uh, plus I was at CBS doing the Diversity Showcase for nearly nine years, so. You saw everybody walking well, through the halls. 25, sure. three are now on Saturday Night Live. I mean, uh, Kate McKenna, who I think is an incredible actress, got a chance to work with her. Loved working with her. Kate McKenna was one of my favorite actors I've ever worked with. Really? Um, yeah, she's she's wonderful. Um, you know, Kate McKenna. You know, Ray Williams Johnson, great guy, and the great star of the internet. There's so many. I mean, 25 series regulars have come out of that program that I've actually coached and directed. Which program? Uh, it's a CBS Diversity Showcase. Okay. 25 series regulars currently on television that have been uh, out of that showcase. So it's really had a great, you and know. And you found them when they were coming up. Me and the, the vice president casting, Fern Ornstein. Uh, oh, yeah. Is that Kate? I yeah. don't know. I don't know if it is Kate. Well, it's a blonde woman. It's uh, a pretty blonde woman. <laughs> a pretty blonde woman. So, she is, so yes. Kate will take it. Thank you for stopping by, pretty <laughs> <Yes>. blonde woman. <laughs> Who has really been, if you had a look and say, oh, when I was coming up, this was my role model. Who were some of those role models for you? I think it was normally the, the writer-actor role models. I mean, John Leguizamo, Spalding Gray. Uh, I mean, I was coming up at the same time as John, so we were, I was either at the uh, Goodman Theater Chicago, they're doing a solo series. It was Spalding Gray, me, and John Leguizamo. Wow. Which I would say is pretty much the, the who's who of the solo world. And uh, he'd be one. Um, Whoopi Goldberg, of course, was a big influence. Um, I mean, you know. She's How is she influence. off the set? She is Whoopi Goldberg. If you Goldberg. can tell the story. No, I mean, it is Whoopi Goldberg. Okay. I mean, the one thing about Whoopi is. She's the, the same exactly on or off. Exactly on, on or off. It's a, it, I, I never met a woman that was more just very alive. She very seems honest. like a perfectionist about her art. You know, in a strange way, uh, uh, I would say so, but I also think she's a uh, product of her beautiful time. Shot yeah, of her. A beautiful shot of Whoopi. Um, Whoopi's Whoopi. I mean, now, Whoopi point. did start, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, she started when she was older. She didn't... Uh, yeah, I mean, for comparatively, I mean, I, was, I must have been 17. She was, to me, an yeah, old... At least uh, 18, though. She, was a, she had a kid. I mean, I remember yeah, that's what her, I thought. She had a child. Her and uh, Roseanne Barr started later in yeah, their careers yeah, and have done remarkably well. I guess the message I'm trying to drive is it don't matter. think you're too old. No. No, in fact, because, listen, when they, when they put in casting, I'm looking for a 50-year-old man. They're not looking for a 25-year-old guy a 25 playing guy. 50. No, they're looking for a 50-year-old man. So right. you can start any time in your career. Danny Trejo, you know, guy I'd worked with, started as an extra in a penitentiary. Yes, he did. So he was just of, getting out. Yeah, just getting out, you know, and became an extra. Walked out of prison into uh, to an amazing and, career. And yeah. he talks about that Yeah, he openly. Does. I spoke with him at a, a prison. We, we spoke together uh, to, to a bunch of prisoners. And uh, he did one of the coolest things. I was looking at all the prisoners. And I'm like, oh, this is not pretty for me. I'm wearing a suit. This is going gonna, to gonna be good. I'm about to talk. I said, Rick, can I talk to them first? I said, sure, Danny. Goes out there. Listen up, I'm Danny Trejo. He's <laughs> y'all know where I've been. Y'all know where I come from. I've been. He's named off all his prisons. Right. And he says, "This man has never been in prison. This is the person you respect." Wow. And that just opened 
open up a great speech. How wonderful. So a great man. What a wonderful man he is, and what a wonderful man you are. Thank you. Let's take a look at your website so people can find out more about yeah. your Almost White campaign and everything else that you mm -hmm. have going on in the world. What's your websites for them? Uh, yeah, there's so many. There's uh, www.ricknahara.com. Uh, you can check out my website. You'll see all sorts of different stuff. And you, you actually answer emails? I answer. You can email me, Mr. Rick Nahara at Gmail. Right. You can, or at Twitter, at Rick Nahara. Okay. So uh, it's all there. Um, I yeah. love it when people tweet me. Uh, you wanna tweet him now tweet, tweet, me tweet now. him fast. Tweet me, tweet me if you can. At and Rick Nahara. also on IMDb, they will find you at Rick Nahara on IMDb. Yeah, I got a lot of stuff on there. There you go. There I go. Yeah. Gosh, what a great looking picture. Who's taking all these pictures of you? Oh, and there you are with another uh, blonde you know, woman. The, yeah, it's my wife. The blonde okay. woman is my wife. Okay, that's that Irish she, woman. She's the Irish, the Irish woman, Susie. Okay, hi, Susie. Susie. Yes. And here you'll find me on. Uh, I am, uh, oh, that's Facebook, on Facebook.com. Facebook. Oh, look at that. Thank you. Uh, and a shot here from the show. Uh, yeah. Kurt Kelly won on uh, Facebook.com. Wow. And on Twitter, it's at Kurt Kelly um, on Twitter. And on the Internet, on KurtKelly.com. And we have we'll something right special for you to watch. So stay tuned. We'll be right back. Hi, I'm Alexis Nichols, one of your Actors Entertainment hosts. Here's a big hug and thank you for joining us on Actors Eat Chat. We are now almost 6 million viewers and chatter strong from all over the world, and we really appreciate you. Actors Eat Chat shoots live Monday through Friday, 10 a.m. Pacific Time, from the Pepper J Production Studio, below the Hollywood sign in Hollywood, California. Want to see all of today's episode or any other of our other episodes? please visit ActorsEntertainment.com and put the talent's name in the search box. And go ahead and visit Actors Entertainment on IMDb.com. That's the Internet Movie Database to see more than 1,200 entertainment industry professionals who have been guests on Actors eChat. And social media is so important, so follow Actors Entertainment on Twitter. Our handle is at Actors Entertain. And join us on Facebook at Actors Entertainment fan page. And don't forget to like us. Those likes really help out. Stay tuned for our Actors Reporter Animation, which won Best Animation at the Telly Awards. Great job in Now Media and Pepper J Productions, and terrific singing by Melissa Suzanne. And now, a special thank you to today's guest. Thank you for joining us today on Actors eChat Live from Hollywood. And what's that email address again? Mr. Rick Nahara at Gmail or my Twitter at Rick Nahara or Facebook me, Rick Nahara, or Almost White. There you go. That's the book. Thank you for joining us today. Thank you. And thank you. thank you for joining us. Make sure you like the pages you found this on today and share it with your friends. Twitter it, tweet it, get it out there. And thanks for joining us on Actors eChat. I'm Kurt Kelly. What's that? <laughs> Actors Eat Chat Show? <laughs> Happens to be my favorite in the morning. I want nothing but a cup of coffee, a bottle of Kahlua, six naked girl. Wait, no, that's not right. Actors Eat Chat Show. Oh my gosh. Hey, big Hollywood starlet that just happens to be walking by. Yeah. I'm not from around here, but I want to be an actress just like you. What do I need to know? <gasps> Kid, let me tell you. Whether you're a seasoned pro or a naive newbie like you, there's one thing you need to know. To get my first job, I lived in a slum. Beat out 50 other girls to play a drunk bum. I cried. My first agent charged me 30%. Thanks. Working three jobs and I couldn't pay rent But I'm an actor She's an actor A shark nod my leg on a B film in Sydney To pay for the stitches I sold my left kidney I finally made a union Their rules were complex Their piles of paperwork fogged up my specs But I'm an actor She's an actor I'm an actor rather disturbing, but what's the one thing I need to know? Don't listen to the critics, don't follow all the terms, forget that sleazy photog and the agent that's got cramps. Go to Actors Reporter, Actors Reporter. Actors Reporter. 
tricks and the secrets without all the sweat. An info packed one stop shop, it's free and on the net. Actors Reporter. Actors Reporter. Actors Reporter. Actors How can they help her? Career cues, union news, makeup woes, advice from pros, insurance tips, choosing scripts, everything at your fingertips. Actors Reporter. Actors Reporter. Actors Reporter. Dad, call. I just got a call back. Hello, <laughs> I'm Mary Jo Gruber. Thanks for joining us on Actor Z Live Chat Show. I'm just one of your Actor Z hosts, but as you can see, I'm also the Actor Z Live video editor, which means that I'm here even when you don't see me. Actor Z is here to chat with you Monday through Friday at 10 a.m. Pacific Standard Time, or Hollywood Time, as I like to call it. Our guests include actors, directors, producers, writers, singers, comics, and others that are all in the entertainment industry. You can see previous shows at www.actorsentertainment.com and be sure to check out our guest index to find your favorite celebrities. See you next time. I'm working.